Hello world, Liz here back with another video. Today I want to talk about the movie May December directed by Todd Haynes, written by Sammy Birch. It is a drama starring Natalie Portman, Julianne Moore, and Charles Melton. Whenever I watch a movie, now I watch it with such a careful eye. I find myself lately take trying to find like some kind of message that I take from a movie. It's not just me, when other people do reviews, it is a bit of a reflection on yourself. You know, the saying, your perception is your reality. And then right after I watched the movie, I watched an interview with Mary Kay Letourneau and Vili Falau. And I feel like it changed <laughs> so much how I see the movie and they had so much stuff that was like spot on. It wasn't long for me to figure out, oh my God, this is, this is a, movie that's based on or inspired by that case when she groomed and uh, aired her student when he was 13 years old and she was 34 years old. Now I think a lot of different things going on in this movie are exploitation, grooming, predators. Um, Natalie Portman's character was a predator as well. You know, she comes from Hollywood and she's making a story about this scandal. She is very narcissistic in herself, very um, emotionless. She has goals, she has aims. She's there to achieve those goals and aims. And she preys upon Julianne Moore's character. And she even, in my opinion, grooms Charles Melton's character based on Billy. I don't know, there was just like a weird vibe with her. It seemed like she was like, I want to know why this lady, this 34 year lady F this 13 year old, I want to know what it's like too. And then she was just so nonsensical about it. She was just like, eh, whatever, we just did it, you know. She had no care about what it would mean to him or anything like that. She, you know, talked in the movie about his quiet confidence and it's kind of sexy and like, she's, I think she might've said he's probably always been like that. Even the making of this movie is very exploitative. So in real life, Mary Kay, she passed away um, about five years ago due to some kind of cancer. Not long before that, her and Billy had broken up or whatever. And he's, I don't know if he's remarried, but I know he has a kid. You know, someone could have really approached him and like really told his story, what he went through, because it seems like throughout this whole situation, that everyone's always like her how could you how could you how could you why 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 and he just sits there like this you know and they they depict him that way in the movie too he's very quiet he's very it seems numb he's very off to himself he's just like you know a ghost pretty much um disassociated they could have very well have contacted him and made this story about a victim you know what i mean and i mean she's not she's gone she's you know, she can't quote unquote defend herself. You know, she's been trying to defend herself for like freaking damn near 30 years now, or I guess 20, 20 years by the time she passed, she was trying to defend her actions. But you know, the movie has just an overarching feel of exploitation. I did see a criticism on Twitter of someone saying that they were disappointed that they filmed it like a lifetime movie. And it did kind of look like that. And I listen there's nothing done in film that is unintentional when i first turned it on i was like went and looked at the settings i'm like is this on like 420 or something like why does this look so low quality but i think they definitely did that on purpose the media the media in the 90s they they really need to be exposed because they did so much to so many people so many celebrities so many victims they need to be held accountable. But the way the media made it into was like, uh, Billy was this grown, sexy 13 year old. And like, she was this hot teacher, just, just couldn't resist. And she, she came onto her and they're sneaking around in cars and he got her pregnant and then she got out of jail. And she ran back to him and they got her pregnant again, which is those things really happen. But they sensationalized it so much. I like how the movie just portrayed them as like regular people because you have these imaginings of like what people really are from far away or people that you read about in news stories but when it comes down to it they're really just people i like how they showed them in 
what I would just call the monotony of everyday life. Having a barbecue, having your kids' friends over, opening a beer or having a quirky hobby. And it was like, all that to say, I did want to talk about the message that I got from the film. A lot of reviews, I feel movie reviews, there's a lot of reaching in there. And people don't just want to admit that like their interpretation of a film is like a reflection of themselves. One of the moments that really stuck out to me throughout the whole movie was actually in the end minutes before the movie ended julianne moore's character she's going in and out of her lift like she'll talk and if you just have this lift and like sometimes i can't tell if it's fake something that she does to infantilize herself a little bit or it's something that she's actually hiding and it comes out when she's stressed out or something. Because when I watch the interviews with her, she'll have it and then she won't have it. But when her and Natalie Portman are talking about their how she should be betrayed in the movie, and she tells her that what her son said about her being molested as a child by her brothers was not true. And then she made a comment that was like, boom, mic drop. She said, insecure people are very dangerous i'm secure make sure you show that and then she walks away and so i was like oh damn like sometimes <laughs> these writers writers man this is this is why you have good writing okay this is why good writing matters writer's lives matter because it's obvious just to say that she's insecure but i feel like something that this character really struggled with as well as the person that this character is based on you're dealing with someone who can never ever admit that they were wrong people who can never admit that they are wrong are very dangerous people. And people who can never admit that they were wrong is because of their deep, deep insecurities and fragile ego. And so one of the reasons why I bring up this, people can't admit that they're wrong is because, as I said before, after the movie, I watched, I, I watched an hour and 15 minute long unedited interview, which I will link below, with Mary Kay and Villy with a phenomenal reporter who, who he, the man tried okay he tried no matter how many examples no matter how many situations no matter how many moments of showing her how she was being such a hypocrite how she was saying she didn't she didn't agree that you know a 34 year old man and a 13 year old girl should be together and then he the the reporter would say but that's the situation that you you're doing the exact same thing but the rest she's like no it's not no, it's not. No, it's not. That's not our situation. Our situation is our situation. I know you guys have dealt with these people. I know you have a parent, an aunt, an uncle, an ex, or somebody, whatever, who is like this where they cannot, even in the face of evidence, even if the blood is on their hands, okay, even if they got ch chocolate chip cookie dust all over their mouth, they will never admit that they ate the cookie, that they touched the paint, that they killed the dog or whatever and there's tons of people in prison who know they did that raggedy shit that they were accused and convicted of and they refuse to admit that they did it the main reason why people refuse to admit that they are wrong is because they have a very very fragile ego their egos are like toilet paper they just disintegrate People who, people who cannot admit that they were wrong do so because if they admit that they're wrong, it's like they're admitting some kind of insecurity and some kind of lack in themselves. And if they admit it, then they're just gonna go on this rabbit hole spiral of low self-esteem, self-pity, whatever. This woman was so insecure and she had such low self-esteem that she found a teenage boy who had trouble at home, you know, looked up to her, thought she was pretty, you know, treated her basically like his God because she was an adult. She probably had never had, never had someone look up to her like that. And she totally, totally took advantage of the situation. 
Villy had talked about him and his friends would hide in the closet in the classroom or whatever and she said something like oh so you're not going to tell him why you were hiding in the closet and he's like I don't remember why were we hiding in the closet I don't know he's like she's like you don't remember what you told me he's like no I don't remember she said you you told me that you guys used to hide in the closet so you could look up my skirt when I walked by and mind you when he was actually her student he was in second fucking grade so she's laughing and joking about potentially a seven-year-old looking up her dress this woman is a p okay but we're gonna leave that there the line that insecure people are very dangerous okay this is an extremely insecure woman who committed a heinous crime i previously talked about my history with low self-esteem i mostly ignore it you know if you've grown up like that it's a daily battle to like reprogram the software that you were like but as i mentioned before about my documentary about my abusive relationship dusty king which the links will be posted below i have a section where i talk about how insecurity low self-esteem led me to that relationship and actually i i had a similar moment to like the scene in the movie which was kind of triggering where charles character was trying to tell julianne like maybe maybe i was too young and she was like no no what do you mean it was you you came on to me anyone who's just a specific situation from that you can go check out the documentary but i was like you were definitely with that girl. You were definitely with your ex for three days. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. That's how they act. The people who cannot admit that they're wrong, man. Insecurity is dangerous. You can see this manifesting in different aspects of life. You can see the guy with the, you know, sports car with the loud man driving real past scaring the crap out of everybody, making a baby cry, just because he needs to let everybody know he has a fast car. Insecurity could be a woman who puts up with a man who's only bringing her down, repeatedly causing her trouble, not helping her out, just being a freaking leech on her life and she just keeps dealing with him and going back with him. What are some ways that it can manifest in actual danger? Could be a guy who abuses his wife and threatens to kill her and their children or he does because she tries to leave him it could be your co-worker or your boss who sees you at work excelling maybe you're getting a raise maybe you're up for a raise maybe you're up for a promotion and they might do stuff to sabotage you they might spread rumors about you they might report you it could be a woman stalking a man who doesn't want to be with her making up lies about him, spreading rumors to people, trashing his name around town, even perhaps making false allegations, reporting him to the police and getting him arrested based on these false allegations due to simply him not wanting to be with her. It happens all the time. It could even be a friend, doesn't celebrate your wins, doesn't tell you stuff, wants you to do good but never better than them you know what i mean a lot of these times with people when they get caught they cannot admit that they're wrong i have had people who've completely fucking ghosted me never spoke to my ass again to avoid admitting that they were wrong when i was watching that interview afterward all i kept thinking i'm like this heifer cannot just say what I did was wrong. The interviewer, he would dribble, dribble, dribble. I uh, lay up and she just stands there like this. Even her husband at some point said that he would have done it differently. He doesn't think it was morally, morally right. And he even said if he was in the same position, he said that he has seen 13 year old girls and he said he could never. And I, and I believed him like, like if you watch him you believe what he's saying he said i could never and the interview was like how do you feel about him saying that and he's she's like well it doesn't matter because that's not our situation it's like yes it is your situation if she was able to admit she was wrong it would completely fucking destroy her if she would have just said look morally it wasn't right 
Instead, she came up with all kinds of statues and this, and no one ever said that an older woman and a, and a teen boy, and no one ever did this, and I didn't know. And instead of just saying, look, look, I know it was wrong. If I could go back, I would not do it the same way and I would have rejected him. I would have changed schools. I would have done whatever I had to do to stop that situation from progressing. But I was so in love with him, or at least I believed I was, and I, I, I'm in love with him now. I knew it was wrong, but I still broke the law anyway because I just wanted to and I couldn't control my passions and my desires. I couldn't control myself. And what I did was wrong, it was predatory, but it is what it is. It happened and we're happy now. Listen, every answer isn't like gonna be a nice pretty Christmas, bo Christmas bow to be thrown out a few days after New Year's, okay? But if she would have just said that, I would have been like, huh, yeah, you're, you're a monster, but you know, it is what it is. Instead, I left the fucking interview why you rub my hair out like what the hell is wrong with this lady why can't you just say what she did was wrong her self-esteem must be in the deepest darkest pits of hell insecure people are dangerous and a lot of them commit crimes gracie's character mary Kay, even natalie portman's character who i thought was very narcissistic as well they will their insecurities are like fucking cement and their protection of their ego is protected with armed guards, a moat with crocodiles, a freaking electric fence. Like they have to protect their ego so bad that they will like, they'll distort reality completely to fit what narrative they wanna tell themselves. What Mary Kay, oh, we were just so in love. Oh, he came on to me, what was I supposed to do? We just had so much stuff in common. What the fuck did you have in common with a 13 year old? Please, I'll wait. I feel like the movie was very accurate to probably how it was. It was like she, she was clearly trying to create this like fake little cottage life um, you know, she's just like, you know, a mom, I'm just, I'm just a mom. And these people, insecure people, and the people who cannot admit wrong, they're wrong, they will lie and they will distort things. We've all done it. But it's to what extent, you know what I mean? When you're starting to make up fantastical stories, blatant lies, and committing crimes, we have a problem course it's the 90s it was definitely like pretty white woman privilege pretty blonde white woman privilege that she got away with this with how she with how she did because I, I do believe if it was a man he would not have he would not have gotten as away with it especially imagine if it was a brown man and a blonde white 13 year old girl it would not have gone down like that and so one thing that she was saying in the movie too she was like I'm so naive I'm so naive like everybody knows I'm naive it's a blessing and a curse it's like, no, you're playing a role. In the interview, she did the same thing. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know. But even watching that interview, I'm like, I'm still unsure what she wanted from him. I don't think that, I definitely don't believe they were in love. I feel like this, this hoe, she was so unable to admit that she was wrong. I'm gonna prove you guys wrong. She went to jail for a little while. She had his baby in jail, then she got out. And then she got with him again, even though she was supposed to stay away from him. She got pregnant again. Then they sentenced her to like seven and a half years. Then she had another baby in jail by him. Then after that, they were, you know, ordered to never, like she was ordered to never be around him or contact him again. But by the time she got out of jail, he was 21 years old. So I'm sure she probably pressured him to get that um, no contact lifted and then not long after it got lifted then they got married with my ex everybody told me Liz this guy is a piece of shit and I was just like ignoring them ignoring them ignoring them and I was gonna see it out I was gonna ride that shit to the wheels motherfucking fell off and just putting myself to a bad situation just because I could couldn't admit that I was wrong, that I chose wrong in this situation. So this woman was so convinced of her lie to herself that she abused a child, continued to abuse him into the adulthood, ruined the lives of her victim, his family, her community. I feel like when she got out of jail, she was like, I 
She couldn't even grapple with it. She's like, oh my God, I'm a, I'm a monster. She couldn't even grapple with it. That she was like, oh no, I gotta marry this guy now because we, we, we're in love. Like, okay, so we were, so we were in love? Okay, okay, that's the message. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Operation, we were in love. Okay, copy. And that's the message her defense mechanism sent to her. And she was like, all right, we're just gonna go with that. We was in love. Now we gotta see this all the way through. Or else everybody gonna be right about me. And then, then what am I gonna do? We've all been wrong. We've all been hard to admit that we are wrong. But when it gets to a dangerous level, we have to check ourselves. If you find yourself affecting your insecurities affecting others being jealous affecting people it's time to go seek some help or something like i said the movie was great i definitely recommend insecurity is dangerous you know i had to keep repeating it because a lot of us don't don't hear and understand shit the first time somebody says i know somebody's watching this video and someone told them this exact message that i said but they still ain't listen yet so i gotta tell you 10 times okay thanks for watching this video please leave a comment rate and subscribe let me know what you think let me know what you felt about the movie if you watched it or about your experiences dealing with people who refuse to admit they're wrong